The Crack of Dawn Walkers by Amy Hest. Pictures by Amy Schwartz. Grandfather taps on her bedroom door. Are you up? He calls softly. It's time. Sadie kicks at the worn pink blanket and the toasty sheets with stripes. Her feet skim the cold wood floor as she races for the rocker and the wooden knee socks she left hanging the night before. Today is my turn, she thinks to herself, my turn. She finds him at the screen door that connects the back porch to the outside. Good morning, she whispers. Now you are ready, Grandfather smiles. Sadie pulls the long purple scarf, the one Graham knit last winter, around her neck. She winds it twice and still the ends dangle below her waist. She feels like a movie star. Grandfather, she says, your hat. She hands over the navy blue beret from the old country, wherever that was. No colds this winter, she warns, and no flu. No colds and no flu, he repeats, carefully latching the door behind them. Snow is thick in the driveway. Sadie is glad she remembered the warm red boots this time. But later, she will remind her mother how they pinch across the toes. Are you stuck? She calls to Grandfather. We will have to shovel, he answers. No, Grandfather, she protests. First things first. She takes his wrinkly hand in her mittened one and leads him across the street. For his sake, she walks slowly. Grandfather is old. I'm glad Ben isn't here and he is glad when you stay behind grandfather replies he talks too much little boys like to chatter he can't keep up his legs are shorter he asks a thousand questions a minute that is how he learns anyway Sadie sighs a deal's a deal one Sunday for Ben and the next one for me. For me, it's a cheat, Grandfather says, this new deal of yours. Sadie shakes her head. Ben and I agreed for once that it's best not to share you. There are four boxy houses on one side of Rugby Road and three narrow ones across the street. Later, when the sun is higher and warmer, the sleepers will creep from their beds and they will press their noses to frosted windows. Aha, they will say, spying two sets of snow tracks. The crack of dawn walkers are at it again. Sadie squeezes grandfather's hand. Let's pretend you and I are alone in the world. No Ben, he asks. No Ben. But I would miss him, grandfather objects. Wouldn't you? Just a little. Not on your life, Sadie answers. Grandfather inhales the ice air into his old man lungs. It was quiet like this in the old country, he says, before the troubles. I wish I could go with you to the old country. It wasn't fancy like here, he says, but we were proud. Aren't you now? Of course, he smiles. Old men must be proud. Sadie pulls the scarf closer around her neck and the hat just below her eyebrows. She wishes she had a furry coat like the one in Graham's closet. At Front Street they wait. Leave it to Grandfather never to cross before the light is green. Even on a snowbound Sunday morning, to keep warm, she jumps up and then down, then up and down again, first on two feet, then from one foot to the other. Hop, 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 hop. Finally, they cross. <laughs> that scarf looks like it's about to swallow her up. 
The sign says, Emma's Bake Shop. Inside, the air is warm and sweet and smells of fresh baked bread and homemade cookies. Grandfather takes a number, and when the hairnet lady behind the counter calls out, Three! He waves his hand and says, Six onion rolls, please! Grandfather, Sadie tugs at his sleeve. Aren't you forgetting something? I don't forget, he winks. Crumb buns for dessert. Because it's Sunday, adds Sadie. Yes, it's nice to do a little extra on Sunday. Outside again, Sadie asks, Now will we go to Fabio's? Grandfather's black eyebrows form two bushy arches. Of course we'll go, he says. Don't we always? Do you take Ben when it's his turn? He loves to go as much as you do. As much as you. Sadie wants to hurry, but instead they trudge through the snow and around those icy patches. Did you have candy stores in the old country, she asks. Grandfather laughs very gently. No candy stores back there, he says. Like I said, nothing fancy. But Fabio's isn't fancy. In the old country, he reminds her, Fabio's would be very fancy. Fabio's smells of fresh brewed coffee, not the instant kind her mother keeps at home. Maybe next year she will sip black coffee with Grandfather instead of the cocoa with whipped cream swirls. The long wood counter at the, black, at the, at the back of the store is cluttered with paper straws and sli silvery bowls filled with sugar cubes and green relish, ketchup, and onion slivers. Sadie boosts herself onto one of the tall padded stools. She spins around twice to the left, then twice to the right. Do you think Ben will be up by the time we get home, she asks. I saw him at the window when we left. Was he sad? Sadie sends the wrapping from her straw sailing toward Grandfather. He looked about as sad as you did at your window last Sunday. Fabio wears his starched white apron and a turtleneck sweater, the brightest shade of red. One black coffee, he says, and one cocoa, double the whipped cream, Fabio always remembers. We mustn't forget the fat Sunday papers, Sadie reminds Grandfather. Maybe when I'm older, Fabio will let me stack them at the front of his store. Meanwhile, I'll help you get one off the top of the pile. Does Ben reach the top yet? Grandfather shakes his head. He still isn't tall enough. I'm glad. One more thing, Grandfather. Suppose we leave a minute or two for browsing? Why browse, he teases. Just in case I have a yen for something special. Grandfather laughs, but you always settle on the bag of licor licorice, the stringy red kind. Maybe one of these days I'll change my mind. Maybe, he agrees. Today, Sadie announces, I will give a piece of licorice to Ben. How kind, Grandfather says. Sa Sadie stuffs the bag into her pocket. Can we have another piece next week, she adds. Even if he decides, oh, he can have another piece next week, she adds, even if he decides to stay home. Grandfather looks surprised. But next week will be Ben's turn, he reminds her. Well, maybe Ben will change his mind. Grandfather shakes his head. I don't think so. He just may be too sleepy. I don't think that either. All right, Sadie shrugs, but we mustn't forget to say how cold we were today. Grandfather bends so slowly to kiss the tip of her nose. My guess is that Ben will come next Sunday, my Sadie, and you will stay behind. And I will be sad. Of course. Let's go home to the rest of the family, Sadie sighs. But for now, Grandfather, we ought to pretend I never have to share you and that you and I are the only morning walkers.
And they do. All right. I love this book because it is amazingly descriptive. Um, so what I would like you guys to do today in your writing journals is I would like you to pick one object in the room that you are working in and I would like you to use as many description words as you can to describe this object so that um, we can guess what the object is without you actually telling us. I want you to use this book as inspiration and think of lots of ways to describe how the object is used, how it feels, how it looks, um, any sounds it may make, how large it is, softness, hardness, anything like that. Good luck.